in the development of the child from birth to adulthood and beyond adulthood. An image that I've always found useful is a sense of, of the journey. And very often you'll see this in children's drawings. They'll, they'll draw a, a series of paintings or clay pieces or using a sand tray, which is a way to, for children to play out some inner images. Uh, the image of the journey is, is very frequent in their description of their own sense of their own life. Uh, I think of one little girl who drew a series of three paintings. And the first one was of a ship uh, sailing out on a sunny day. And her story is, and I'll tell you the story, then I'll tell you the drawings. The story was, if you sail out on a sunny day and don't hit the rocks, which is the second painting, you will come to your own special island, which is the third. And for me, that's a marvelous metaphor and a deep understanding of the journey of life. Because for me, the journey is to start out uh, on the ship, hopefully on a sunny day. But it's a, the journey which begins is from a land already known. And that land, it seems to me, is the unconscious sense of unity with the totality. Its first experience is a unity with the parent, with the mother primarily. But I think it's not even distinguished by the child as the mother, because that separation hasn't even begun at that point. It's a real sense of being um, united at a very deep level. My sense of that is that that is spontaneous in the child. There's a very deep quality in all of us, uh, which one could call the essential nature. Uh, Jung calls it the self. It's the larger totality. It's the wholeness that we talk about when we talk about holistic medicine. Uh, the wellness, which comes from the same root as wholeness. It's, it's the sense of well-being in relationship to our totality. My own experience of that beginning, as it's described primarily with, by children in their own drawings and their own early senses of themselves, is that they have a sense uh, of their wholeness, a sense of the unit that they are, at birth, that that's not a, a distinct element in terms of, of being different from the parent, being different from the sisters and brothers, being different from the plants, that the very early experience is one of unification. However that's experienced at that stage, uh, if it's experienced uh, at all at a, at a much more unconscious level, it's a, it's a memory, it's an imprint, uh, it's a structure in us that's there and that exists, but it's not experienced at a conscious level, I think, when we're very young. And it seems to me what this journey is about for us, the life journey, is to continually begin to search uh, for that wholeness consciously. And we make many bypaths and we make uh, many mistakes and uh, we go on narrow paths which are only partial journeys. But underneath that, I think, is a tremendous urge in all of us to essentially return home to that sense of wholeness, but to recognize it, to have completed the journey which brings us back to the totality. I've seen uh, children do that in, in clay pieces sometimes. They'll, they'll make a big round, which is uh, the whole, and then inside they'll have that little ball, which is themselves. And they'll kind of put it in and take it out and put it in and take it out. And so they know they belong to something larger and that they are something larger. But the experience of life and what their task is, is to remove themselves from that temporarily, and that temporarily state may be the, the total life, um, in order to explore and learn consciously what they are and what, what life is about. That state and the development of that state is what's usually called the ego, the development of an aspect of the self as separate from. And the task of the ego is to learn, of course, how to deal with the world in some way, uh, which is effective, uh, in which the child can learn how to take care of himself, survive, uh, develop his creative gifts. That, is, that somehow is the strong task of the ego. We, we get confused about the ego. It doesn't mean pride. It doesn't mean uh, uh, egotistical. But it means the, the development of the strength of this individual person uh, in the exploration of the world. And the task of that ego is to go out and search and search uh, 
for more pieces of itself in relationship to the world so that it can increase, it can grow, and it, its task is to uh, always keep um, increasing the sense of being awake, the sense of being um, aware of the world and adding to the knowledge, adding to the knowledge of self and world. Uh, that sounds like a long and large task for a child, but what I've been describing really I, for me is a metaphor for all of life's journey and the development of that. What happens, I think, in a child is that that, that beginning exploration starts fairly soon. Um, there's, there's a sense of, we've all seen that when children begin to first discover their toes, as though their toes were something distinct from self. You know, they kind of look, pick them up, and they look at them, and they play with them, and they put them in their mouths, and they taste them, without any sense of that being part of them. And a funny kind of separation begins of, uh, of the hands, the feet, the toes. So the first exploration is almost part of self, but in that beginning separation. And then the child will begin to crawl and begin to explore the room and begin to explore later outside the house as it walks. Uh, it, you know, the, the one and a half, two year old begins to walk and you have to take everything off the tables because they go in the mouth and they have to be explored and looked and touched and tasted. You really watch a child in that exploration. The intensity of that is enormous. And the sense of, is that me, is that not me, and the, the sense of separation of, uh, is already at foot. At about two, I think a whole other development comes in. And for me, that's when the father, not necessarily the literal father, but the fathering principle comes in. And that's the time when I think the strongest sense of se uh, separation from the mother and from that sense of unconscious totality begins to take place. Uh, the most common word at that age is no. Um, it's no, and it's no, and it's no. Uh, I saw recently a little boy, just at that age, who was offered a cookie by his mother, and with great desire and anticipation went toward the cookie, holding his hand up to the cookie, saying at the same time, no, no, no. It's almost as though that's the primary practice at that time is to say no. And if you question it, if you don't say what many people say, the terrible twos, because that no, if it's directed at you, sounds, but if you take it personally, it sounds like a rejection uh, and, and a willful sort of uh, disobedience. But the practice of that no, I think, is the no to that unconscious state of unity. Very often is no to the mother. It's the first sense of I am myself uh, and you are you. So the separation or the break, uh, I think, comes from some kind of discernment which, which begins then. And I have a feeling, that's why I'm saying the fathering principle, who says, um, no, you can do this, yes, you can do this, some, some uh, sense of duality. And the father, if he operates in the home, uh, or if some element of the mother, because mother can often carry this side, that no quality as it develops in the child, is also the beginning of a relationship to the world in terms of self-protection. It's the quality that turns from just the nurturant quality and says, it's dangerous to cross the street. Those are big cars out there. No, you can't cross the street uh, without looking both ways. So another principle begins to come into the child's life at that time, not just the, um, the feeding, the nurturing, the warmth of the protection, but a sense of discernment begins to um, enter the child. And I think this quality uh, begins, if it operates in the child in, in a normal and a healthy way, you begin to see developing in the child elements of both aspects, uh, a quality of life which has to do with, again, the nurturance, uh, the acceptance of life, the exploration of it without judgment, and the other side which begins to judge, which begins to say it's this and it's not that. Uh, I am myself and you are you. So that both elements can be begin to flourish at the same time. The total acceptance and at the same time some, some level of discernment. Those are, at a, at a most basic level, uh, something that has something to do with the masculine and fem feminine elements in relationship to the world. But in a child's development, they, if you watch them, if you really watch them carefully, there is a spontaneous movement toward that. The child's relating to everything without discernment. Uh, 
they don't have a sense of this is clean and this is dirty. They're just as fascinated with dirt as they are, uh, that which is shiny polished. That discernment also comes in with the child's no, I think, uh, in a spontaneous way. So the elements of the child which he needs for balance in terms of his personality at a later date, if allowed and supported, uh, are spontaneously there to, to grow and help him in his exploration and his ability to deal with the world uh, strongly and capably. Thank you.